trek that I was ne never part of the hustle and bustle. And I was a very reluctant filmmaker. I happened to be making films and I was doing it for a completely different reason. I was doing it only to redeem myself and to prove to my dad that I can be responsible. And then I wanted to run away. That was my plan even before I made QSQT. The idea was to run away. The idea was I want to live that kind of life, but how do I get there? So those four films happened in that process. I was so, there's absolutely no illusion in my mind. Now that the films have become successful, I wouldn't like to say that, yeah, yeah, you know, this is what I was planning. That is not what I was planning. I was planning exactly this. So I'm one of the lucky guys who managed to get away. So, uh, so it was not difficult for me. In other words, I was moving towards something. I wasn't running away from something. I have nothing to run away from. I was moving towards something. But you know, the common perception is that this guy has disappeared, you know, into the fog. Actually, for me, Bombay City disappeared into the fog. I am very clear where I am. That's uh, I would look at it the other way around. Yeah. In this book, uh, I'd like to clarify, every time I speak about this now, I, I feel that I should really make it clear that my book is not about some of the things that we feel it may be about, like uh, environmentalism or you know, environment or, or uh, you know, uh, inequity or injustice or this and that. It's not about those, not directly about that. So what I'm fundamentally addressing in this book is what is going to be possible. So I'm saying let's not worry right now about whether it's right to do or wrong to do. Is it correct to do this or wrong to do this? And what is it I'm talking about? I'm talking about our concept of growth our concept of economic growth, industrial growth, you know. I'm saying my argument in the book from, from multiple angles is that this is not possible and it's already showing signs of failing. And I'm not getting up today and suddenly saying it. We've been studying it for people like me, even people from whom I've learned a lot. I've added my own thoughts to it, of course. We've been saying it from 10 years back. In fact, we, what we are seeing unfold is no surprise to us. If you go back and read those blogs, and you read those websites and you read all that stuff and they're not just doomsdayers, they are, it's no surprise. So people are realizing it today because it's post-2008, which is what we were talking about. And it is post-2010 where India started feeling the pain. So it took two, three years for India to start feeling the pain of 2008, which is not any old economic collapse. It is not like the 1930s, 29, that uh, everybody seems to think, oh, this is a, just a cycle. This is some kind of market thing happening and you know. So the reason why it's perpetuating for five years, the reasons why things are falling apart, the, the reasons why are quite different from what many people have been conditioned to think that they are because of. Due to uh, policy making, due to liquidity crunch, due to corruption, due to whatever, you know. Everybody is thinking that this is because of that. Whereas my book is talking about this at a core level, which is that fundamentally growth is because of energy. And uh, the role of energy is misunderstood, hardly understood, and never evaluated totally even by experts. And we only talk it, uh, of it in, in slots, you know. And we, it seems to us as though if energy is a problem, we'll simply get it from somewhere else. It's not that simple. So my book goes into each facet of energy. So it's not so much about economics before all the economists get up and say, how the hell are you talking about economists? <laughs> e economics, I'm not an e economist, but I'm talking about something which is below economics, by which economics is defined. And it is defined by energy. Energy is a defining factor. Energy is a true currency of the universe, not money. Money is a token that represents value. Energy is value itself. This is what we have forgotten.